makes sense. And it's a good way of measuring trends without getting whipsawed out of everything. So what we did is we took these different algorithms and we ran them through our model. And we just said, hey, look, if the 10 days is greater than the 20 and the 20 is greater than the 50, we had to look at what the prior stage was. And if closing prices then closed out or above what these breakout periods were, we can decide what stage was it in. Was it in late stage one or was it in early stage two? But ultimately, anything on the left side of the algorithm is a viable part of the algorithm, which supports the rule you always buy stage two, always. Even if you don't pick the perfect bottom, because no one's that good. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we do that. And ultimately, if the market fails and the market really doesn't close above certain levels, we start to say, OK, we're already in stage two. Or maybe we're still in stage one. But anything that happens like we just showed, the 10, 20, 50 relationship, is either late stage one or early stage two. And if we're wrong, I'm going to show you exactly where you're wrong, where you can get out quickly. This is the same for a breakdown, by the way. This is the algorithm for a stage four. But the concept's what I want you to get today, because we only have a little bit of time together. Now, what our software does is it then says, hey, let me see what it looks like. And so we don't just show you a, a chart and say, hey, why don't you figure all this out? And every time you see a moving average cluster, write down which one it is. We figure out what stage we're in. But ultimately, the moving averages don't lie because it's data. And data is based on what people do, price. And it doesn't lie. People lie. Data doesn't lie. Data is data. So it's objective. Which means, guess what? On this 2-3 pullback along the trend line, that's a viable pullback. If the market ultimately broke down, you know, traditional technical analysis would say, hey, if we made a lower low here, meaning that if this 2-3 level broke the prior low, this is important. So if this 2-3 in price only, not the moving average, but price only, broke down the prior low, what should you always do? You should sell. You should execute your stops. Isn't that what, that's what traditional technical analysis would tell you. I say it's wrong. Because the moving averages help to smooth out that raw, jagged edge of volatility where you could have a down day. And that down day may not be enough to move the ultimate moving average lower. So what do most people get caught up in in active trading? What really is the biggest nemesis to people that trade a little bit more actively? Overtrading is one of them, no question about it. And the other one, that's a big one, by the way, whoever said that. And what's the other one? Whipsaw. Yeah, whipsaw. How many here that trades actively enough would say that whipsaw is just like one of their most unfavorite things that happens? Show of hands. Yeah. How many times have you been in the right position only to get stopped out and it ultimately goes your way in the direction that you ultimately traded? Whipsaw. whipsaw. I hate whipsaw. Whipsaw gets me all the time, or at least it used to, because I'm thinking, okay, should I be disciplined and follow my stop? Or should I have what? Conviction. It's a thin line. Well, we believe that the moving average cluster moves that away from you and says, I don't have to decide. That's subjective. And the market really doesn't care about your opinion, by the way. Now, I'm not running for mayor up here, so I'm going to call it the way it is, OK? <laughs> it doesn't. The market doesn't care about our opinion, does it? No. It's always right. So I want to be objective. An objective says, even if I had a 2-3 breakdown, and it broke the prior price level, which this one did on the lows, if you, if you could look at it close, it actually pierced the prior low, it's still viable. So while most people, most amateurs, most of the 80% that are losing their money are getting stopped out, guess what? I'm buying it. I'm still buying it. Or I'm still holding it if I'm already long. So this is very valuable data that forces me to stay within the right stage of the market. And markets you know, don't always move beautifully in higher highs and higher lows, do they? I mean, it's not a dance. It's not always one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It'd be nice if it were, but it doesn't always work that way. Yes, sir? Quick question. Sure. Moving averages are, are lagging indicators. So are you doing anything to them to, to apply them? Um, because correctly applied, it should be adjusted back. OK, great question. First of all, let me tell you this. Everything's a lagging indicator. There's no such thing as a leading indicator, none. There isn't any leading indicators. 
Anyone that tells you there's a leading indicator is either making up a funny term, like the Treasury Department does. They have their inventory, book-to-bill ratios on, let's take semiconductors. You know, their book-to-bill ratios measure inventories and, hey, how many orders do you have booked versus how many you got billed? And we think, oh, okay, if we can have all these booked orders before we actually bill them out, which is when we send out the equipment, that would be a good indicator, wouldn't it? Be a leading indicator. Does it work? doesn't work. A true leading indicator would work, which means it would lead the market. There are no leading indicators. Big myth, okay? Great question. So the truth is, everything is a lagging indicator. So what we do is we take a collection of basic human psychology and we say, price, but let's smooth it out a little bit with some moving average clusters, not just one, but a cluster, 10, 20, and 50 days. Then we put a weighted volume criteria in this thing. So we measure the amount of volume that moves the moving average in relation to price. Then we also measure the velocity. How quickly does it happen? And finally, we measure it on multiple time frames so we know which way we want to trade, whether we want to be long term or a day trader. So you're not adjusting the average four times? We're not adjusting the average four times, no. We're adjusting only how much of that average gets factored in based on volume and velocity. And I'm going to show you in a few more slides where we bring in one more measure, the stochastic, but our own little way of doing it. So basically, we take five criteria and we put them into our formula, and if it doesn't meet the criteria, we just toss it. We just say, I don't want to know about it, don't show it to me, and it just gets thrown right out of the system. So ultimately, what this is, though, is the concept because, see, what I want you to think about more than anything else, and you can tell what my talk's about is the logic behind it, not some literal magic formula that you just plug into your system and say, go get them, baby, because it doesn't work. And your own common sense tells you you know that doesn't work. You have to understand what really is the market being measured by. And what we can see here as an example is a tremendous amount of noise up here in stage three, but stage three really isn't stage, stage three doesn't turn to stage four till ultimately the market really breaks down. And a lot of people look at this and say, man, I want to, I want to sell up here or I want to get short up here. The truth is the smart trader is getting short down in here, not at the highs. He's going after the high probability. He's trading like the Bellagio. He's not trying to win every time. He's trying to be consistently profitable by doing the right things. So we're measuring these stages through the moving average cluster and a few more things that the next slides are going to show. But the concept of why we're using these clusters the way we do is the psychology and the way that those clusters reflect basically the opinion of the market and its participants. The short Price basically is like an infant child. Warren Buffett said if the market were a human, would call Mr. Butt or Mr. Market, and it would be capable of schizophrenic behavior, and it would be schizophrenic. Manic highs and depressive lows if it were a human. You wouldn't be friends with the stock market, by the way, if it were a human, because you couldn't hang out with it. Be like your best friend one day and biting your head off the next. It's schizophrenic. So what the moving average does is it smooths some of that out and says, you know what? Take out these manic highs and these depressive lows. Give me an overall picture of what you're like. And then give it to me on multiple time frames. And it smooths out the volatility. So what we're really looking for is the overall trend line defined by the volatility and the volume in which that volatility trades within. The next thing we take then is the stochastic of that.